looks pretty formal up here, but we try to keep this meeting informal. Uh, one thing I would like to remind everybody is that while we may ask uh, certain people to speak in the work session, uh, we do not have a public participation in the work session. This is a working meeting, uh, but we would, if we need to talk to you, if we want to call on you, please come forward and uh, address the council. First item on tonight's agenda will be a library board discussion uh, presented to us by Mr. Dan Stankowski, uh, member of the library board of directors, also uh, eight year city councilman, former city councilman in the city of Fair Oaks. Okay, Dan Stankowski. Ah, now I see green. Dan Stankowski, 205 White Avenue. Uh, Mayor and Council President, Council Members, thank you for your willingness to serve and your hard work. I, I know it's not easy having been there. Today I am here on behalf of the Library Board, the Library Foundation, the Friends of the Library, and the 193,000 patrons that visited our library in, 19, er, in 2016. My purpose here is twofold. First, to solicit your support for library growth and improvement by seeking an amicable agreement with Faulkner State College to release the second floor space that they have leased. And second, to bring you up to date with events, programs, and happenings at our library. I was on the City Council when the library was built 10 years ago and we discussed location and cost and size. Many at that time said that the internet would kill libraries and they would be obsolete. However, we decided to build a library for today, tomorrow, and the future. We finished the first floor and reserved the second floor for future growth. The space on the second floor in the interim was released or was leased to Faulkner State College for their nursing program with the understanding that it would come back to the library or city when they finished their new science building. Well, the science building is a couple years old and they are still in the space on the second floor. And we would like to have uh, Faulkner vacate the second floor by mutual agreement. In the event you have not been to our library recently, I have an information packet for each of you showing some of the statistics. And you know Toastmaster said don't hand anything out because they'll stop listening to you. Everybody got a copy? Anyway, you can look at that at your own pace and you can see what's going on at our library, but I'll give you some of the highlights for 2016. 193,000 patrons visited the library. The library hosted 12,000 patrons in 718 adult programs. The library hosted 5,600 children in 131 summer reading programs. The library hosted 5,500 children and teens in 215 story time programs. 142,000 books were checked out. Computer users were 44,000 and Wi-Fi users were 112,000. And you can see by what, what we have in this packet, the library is, is alive and well. Some of the proposals for this space when we get it back. The existing teen area has outgrown its present space. Additional space is needed for books, computers, audio books, and the staff area. The library hosted 12,000 children and teens in the summer reading and story time. The question is, would you rather have 12,000 children in your library or out on the street looking for something to do to entertain themselves? We would like to include a veterans resource area with computers and volunteers 
to assist veterans and answer questions. Genealogy has grown in popularity and space is needed for the genealogy club meetings, for books, catalogs, and other resources. The friends of the library need more working space and these are the folks that help us a lot at the library with all of the free volunteer work that they do and on top of it they raise funds. Technical services needs work area for proctoring, cataloging, and entering new items into the library collection. We would also like to create a, what is called a maker space, which is the most exciting innovation gaining momentum in the library world. This is a creative, do-it-yourself space to create, invent, and learn. And this would include a 3D printer, which is the state of the art in computing. The library board is well aware that libraries are not self-sustaining and they do not produce direct income. Our library is a vital partner contributing to the livability and quality of life we have come to expect here in Fairhope. Libraries indirectly produce income from users and visitors who eat and shop in town. The peer is not a direct income producer and yet is fully funded without reservation and wholly maintained by the city. The board will do what we can to defray the costs associated with the additional space by seeking grants, but we know that grants are not a sustaining or continuing source of revenue. We will work with the Friends of the Library and the Library Foundation to seek donations to have fundraisers and adjust fees if necessary and where necessary. But to use a cliche, at the end of the day, it is up to you, the mayor and the council, you shoulder the ultimate responsibility to the citizens to ensure our library is fully funded and programs such as you have in this packet can continue and the library can continue to grow. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Stankowski? Thank you for your time. I appreciate Anybody it. Anybody have any questions? <coughs> Make your space. Yeah. Have you, uh, I, I guess this is a question to you, Mr. Stankowski, and maybe to the mayor, because I know that you've had some <coughs> questions with Dr. Branch. And, Alabama Coastal. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was about to be my next question. Have you even tested the water to, to even determine whether or not I, I they have would not. Brief, they would let us break the contract? And if so, how much are they? The last time I was up there, it didn't seem like they were really utilizing that space, although they have the lease on it. I have been told that they have maybe one or two classes. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends, but, uh, but they still are using it. Okay. Now, I, a, as I mentioned, I would like to see some kind of mutual, amicable agreement. I'm not. I'm not saying that what we should do is 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 kick them out because in reality, if you look at the lease, they've got it till 2025 with three with uh, two two renewals. Yeah, I'm not a fan of assuming mm -hmm. options are <coughs> going to be exercised because they are optional. Yes. So yes. I think it expired. The first option ends much sooner than that, right? Uh, 2019 is the uh, yeah. the, so, the call it three year. Well, it's a three option year. Three and an option of continuous options. The lease was uh, executed April 1st of 2016. That's the first three year option, which ends 2019. Right. They have the option of renewing. But they have the. Option. They have the option of renewing. And the city has the option of determining what the rent will be. Um, so if they decide to exercise their option rights, they, they could do another three years and then another three years, which would put it at 2025, I guess, if, that's, if my math is right. If my memory serves me correct, what are they, about 2100 2200 a month right now? 2200 a month. And since you brought that up, um, if we, if we uh, in the interim, I, I would like to propose or have you all think about they're paying $2,200 a month and what I would 
hope that uh, y'all would consider uh, an escrow account and putting that $2,200 a month in an escrow account for the use of the library so that when and if we get the space that we already have some funding. And, and if you calculate a $60 million budget, that's $24,600. That $24,600 is point zero 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 four percent of the city budget. You said something about the agreement of, that they could use the space until the science building was complete. What? Well, during the negotiation, Mike Ford did the negotiating on this uh, lease in the contract. And we had a lot of discussions. Now, it's not, it, you won't find that in the lease. That's just what was said, and I know, uh, Jay, <laughs> you, you and I both know that if it's not written, it never happened. Uh, but that was that that was the history of it, and uh, uh, it's it's not written. But as I said, I'm 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 not opposed to them. I think that it it, it was a great thing that they did, uh, and and the nursing program uh, apparently has been successful. And and I wish all the continuing su success for Faulkner. However, they built their science building. And um, and they're still upstairs. Any other questions? Well, I, I, I hate to tell you, but I, you know I do want to point out, and it'd be great if we could bank that twenty twenty six thousand four hundred. You sold yourself short a little bit there, but uh, yeah, okay. we are we are budgeting eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the library this year, so. If we have anything left, I mean, we you know we, we will do everything that we can. Oh well, now <laughs> let's. Now, I haven't done the math on what that is in the sixty million dollar budget, but it's well, it's a whack. It's a, it's pretty. It, good it's there. a whack. But I'll tell you this also. The repairs to the library are long overdue because it was leaking when I was on the council, and and. And then that's not including that. What's that? Yeah, that's going to be another four to five hundred thousand dollars this year. We'll do everything we can. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. We will. Thanks, Thank you. And we all agree with that, Council and the Mayor. I think we'll do everything that we can to assist in any way that we can and see what's going on with Faulkner. I got some some thoughts on that as well. Okay, Marina Boatyard lease discussions. Uh, Council last week uh, we had a gentleman and uh, Shirley uh, come up and give us some talk about um, just some ideas. Was it Lynn? Yeah. Lynn. I I'm sorry. I'll remember. It's been two day. weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> a lot has happened. Got a check mark on your name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Well, I, I visited the marina with Sherry Lee and the gentleman, so um, forgive me. I just kind of merged it all together in my mind. But uh, no, thank you for that. And anyway, it's caused a uh, you know a lot of uh, people to have questions about what the future of that's going to be. And so I think, Council, we need to. Um, I think that we need to discuss what what we envision uh, going forward with that with that property, and so I can uh, I can open it up to the council members to talk about that. But uh, Councilman Brown brought up that the um, current leaseholder, uh, the daughter of the current leaseholder, is here, and and they haven't had an opportunity to speak on the subject, and I don't know. If, she may think I'm putting her on the spot, and I, I think it only fair to give them an opportunity to speak to that. So, um, if you would like to come Is speak, she or to Tom, or Tom, I'm C. Tom. So, I, I think, in, in, in fairness, to hear their side of the story, uh, I would like to invite you up if you'd like to address the council for maybe about five minutes, five or six minutes, and tell us um, from a from the current leaseholder. What you envision? Uh, I'm I'm Tom Hutchings. Thanks for the opportunity to, to be here. And this is Catherine Wall, who's Ed Wall's daughter, and is running the marina now, and has been for the past six months or so full time, while Ed is um, in Demopolis. So, um, 
you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. We'll, we'll be short. Um, we are extremely interested in renewing the lease um, at the boatyard and the marina. Um, the family is, not me. I'm not involved in that. I'm acting as their advisor. I was Ed's partner when we built the marina 30 years ago and um, have since built another boat yard and so I have a little bit of experience about what's going on there in marina. So um, essentially it boils down to this is um, we don't think that the there's a lot of synergy between the boat yard and the marina. They work together. One feeds the other. Um, the current situation is down there as it's always been is that it's a very small facility um, with a limited in terms of a boat yard. Um, with limited earning potential and it's a lifestyle more than anything else. It's providing a service to the city of Fairhope that they've always expected, not just to the commercial folks and not just to the tourists that come through, but to the yacht club members and to people that have been used to having a boat repair facility on their side of the bay when they don't have to go over to Mobile here for years. Um, it needs to stay that way is, is our position. Um, we are we're open to whatever the council comes forward with and the mayor come forward with in terms of how improvements can be made. I think if anybody's been down there in the past few years, um, excuse me, in the past few months, they'll see a lot of improvements in terms of cleaning up, getting some non-paying customers out of there, um, taking some losses on some boats and some, um, some money's owed, but trying to clean it up into where she can have the best shot at making a good living out of the small space that's available to her. Um, can you separate them? Of course you could. Um, will one work without the other? Not as well as they both work together. Um, the boatyard uh, needs the slips and the people there in the, in the slips. Could there be some improvements there and some realignment perhaps um, in terms of size of slips? According to what type of boating people are doing these days, yes, it could. But the but the monies that would be required there would be something that I think whenever you decide what you're going to move and how you're going to move forward, that'll be in the terms of the lease as to who's involved and who's responsible for maintenance and upkeep and things of that nature. Um, you know, um, I think we provided everything to um, to touch wherever he is, I think, that he's asked for in terms of um, the expenses and the, and the hard assets that Eastern Shore Marine has down there. Um, basically, it's the, it's the big paint shed and then some expenses they've experienced recently with terms of storm damage and things of that nature. Um, I, think, um, I think the realities of what we heard last week um, from, um, from these guys in terms of what perhaps the mayor wants or or somebody else wants um, in terms of the revenue numbers never even approached half of that in, in 30 years of operation. Um, could it make that? No, it couldn't make that. Um, is it primarily directed towards a gateway into Fairhope and is it for tourist, tourists? I don't think so and I know this family doesn't think so. Um, I think in the rhetoric that's come out on all sides, this is not so much a revenue issue or, or what's best for the people and the tourists that visit here, but it's about the families that live here in Fairhope and it's about a family that's run this business for 30 years. And frankly, the fact that they're able to make a living for 30 years says a lot for them. And they would like to continue. So, Catherine, do you wanna add to that? You did a great job. <laughs> I mean, I thank y'all for letting us come and speak and just for the opportunity. And yes, we would like to keep it. We would like to go forward, grow, and, you know, have it really kind of the way I've envisioned it my whole life. So, <laughs> well, let me just say this. And, and I'm, a, I'm a good friend of her dad's, and, um, and he, he is who he is. <laughs> but um, I think in the hands of, a, of, a, of Catherine, it is, um, we're seeing a whole resurrection, not just of the place physically, but also of the attitudes of people who may have been in and out of there in terms of increased business from the yacht club. People see the difference, like the difference, and want to continue to see what she can do. So, any questions? Uh, yeah, Mayor Council, do you have any questions? You know, 
know, as a city, and we want to do this for every entrepreneur because we are a town of entrepreneurs. We really are. That's how Fairhope began. It's what makes us special today, and it's really what we need to continue to do to build the infrastructure so people can come in and make their dreams come true. Um, but the city also has to, you know, take all of its assets and make sure that they are benefiting as many citizens as it can, as it can. Sure. and there's a lot to look at and I'm not making any decisions at all I mean this is not all coming from me I would never do anything without studies and input from the council and citizens which I've, I've talked to um, but if we are looking at things that can bring value to citizens and you know visitors we just we need to look at that and since the lease is coming up there is not a better time to look at it right now and to see if it would work doesn't mean hey it might not work you know but a city cannot subsidize a business unfortunately even if it is bringing a lot of good to the community because it just where do you stop to do that so we want with what we're trying to do to make it better this would absolutely impact your business in a positive way and it wouldn't be just your business but other entrepreneurs would have opportunities there because if it truly was something that bayfront beautiful park uh, a benefit to all then we would make sure that it benefits people maybe who don't own a boat you know they might want to just do the uh, paddleboard or whatever it might look like. So um, I hope you know that as far as I'm concerned, I want to bring in better opportunity for entrepreneurs. And I think with something that we're looking at and really wanting to do, it's, it will make a big positive impact on your business. But the marina, I mean, the boat slips and the boat yard are two different entities. And if we have to invest the money that is needed in the infrastructure and dredging, which I put in as part of my Restore Act proposal, then we have to have that income to maintain it. It won't even pay for it probably as much as it needs to, to happen, but it will, at least it will help offset it. And that's something that's very important to everybody here, is to make sure that it's dredged properly and kept up. Any questions before we get into some further discussion among the council? Any questions for them? No, well, thank you for the opportunity, and, and just in response to that, if I may, um, Fairhope was funded, I mean, was founded, excuse me, funded, talking about funding, um, was founded on basically the idea of equality, right? I think everybody knows that. The term that was used last weekend was, was high end, and it was used over and over and over again. Um, this facility has served the people of Fairhope, whether they were wealthy or not, for years. And the fishing community was very much a part of that. And relationship with the fishing community was important, still is, and they remain a very important part of the history of Fairhope. And they are entrepreneurs. And we they want are, to do as the absolute as best for them so they can sustain. And I think we all want that. Okay. Again, well, it's I mean, part of who we are as a society. We are, a, we are, a model city of unique entrepreneurs you know and I think that's what will continue to be yeah and hopefully the city can do its part to make it better yeah I hear you and I would like to have that conversation with you outside of here and we're all lucky to live here and it's a wonderful place and let's just not forget the fact that it has served Fairhope for a long time and we hope that it'll continue to not just the tourists but everybody here from all socioeconomic levels. So, thank you. We thank appreciate you. any consideration you give us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Councilman Conyers, any comments? Um, <coughs> yes, just a, a few thoughts on the marina and the boat yard. Um, first of all, I think the boat yard is, is a valuable asset to have there with the marina. I don't think that we want to see the city being in, in the business of running a boat yard. Um, as far as the marina and the slips go, you know whether the city were to take that over or whether that was to be continued to maintain by whoever has the lease on the boat yard 
Um, I do think that the city's underutilizing that asset. I think we could expect some more revenue from that, whether we increased the lease or whether we took it over and hired a harbor master. Um, either way, um, additionally, you know, I guess I'd be I'd be open to hearing discussion on on either the harbor master, city managed uh, slips and marina, or increasing the monthly lease payment and allowing whoever runs the boat yard to also run the marina. I don't want, um, I certainly don't want to slight the walls in any way. I have been asked from some different folks that should we consider that we're not going to necessarily want to renew the lease under the current terms anyways. I mean, we want to build in uh, for the Environmental Advisory Board. They would like very much to have the clean marina built into that program built into the lease. Should we consider saying that, well, we're going to we're not going to renew the lease as it is. The walls would have every opportunity, should we bid it out, to have as much of a an option as anyone else to, to have a shot at having that lease. But I don't want to drag it out. I know we have a six-month window. We're supposed to give some notice in advance, so that's something I'd like to hear discussed. And the projection on income revenue numbers from two weeks ago, those may have been high. They may have been accurate. I don't know. But I do think that um, we could expect to earn more revenue than what we've done in the last several years. So that's my, my thoughts. Can I say that I agree with Jimmy and not be neglect? No, I, I do think Jimmy made some, some good points, and a lot of which, most of which, or maybe even all of which, that I agree with. Um, you know, we had the presentation last week of maybe the city taking it over and operating it, and I've seen some numbers and talked to some people this week about maybe continuing it as is where we lease it out and whoever operates the boat yard operates and runs uh, the boat slips also. Uh, but, but I do agree, I think, that we are under utilizing those as an asset. I think that regardless of what we do moving forward, that we, we need to get more return for, for our property down there. Um, and I, I'd actually maybe like to see once we determine what we're going to do, uh, maybe compare sort of some of the projections we looked at last week versus as a city-owned uh, operation and, and look at what the uh, the potential revenue would be to the city from leasing it out, the boat yard and the slips out to somebody else. And in my opinion, if, if it's, if the, if the revenue generated from the two are close, I think it, should, it would be a no-brainer for us to lease that out uh, so that it's just not another, because there's a lot of inherent and sort of built-in cost when you operate it yourself. Um, and this, so if we can generate close to the same amount of revenue without taking on that burden and operating it as a city, I think that would be, at least in my opinion, the best way I, to get I would agree with that. We're, we're on the same right place on. today. That's all. I, have a, I actually have a few little differences. In, in reading uh, the boat slip lease, uh, it says that we have a, we can renew uh, the lease upon written request. Now, my question was, if we change the lease, is that st and then offer it for renewal, is that the same thing? Or if we change the lease, do we have to put it out for bid? Tuck may be able to correct me. The way I understand it, uh, Councilman Boone, is that we can give the Wall family the first right of refusal for whatever the negotiated terms are. Right. If they <clears throat> do not agree to those terms, then we can put it out for a bid, which and they could be a bidder. Is that correct? That's yes, correct. And that is the way I understood it. Uh, it's obvious that uh, under the current lease, it, uh, as Jim and Jay have both stated, that uh, five percent of the uh, boat slip lease and six percent of the marine lease rather unacceptable as far as what the city should be taking in from this lease. Uh, that obviously has to be changed. That's the reason I was asking this question, because I think it, overall everybody agrees in the fact that uh, it's, five, it's a 5% or $1,500 on the uh, boat slip and $3,000 flat rate or 6%, whichever is greater, for the boat yard. And those, change, those figures should truly be changed uh, 
and basically, we, you know, I feel we're just giving that away, giving money away for, for the uh, what could be made down there. Uh, I think in Ashley's discussion last week, a lot of that had to do with a what I would refer to as a um, you know an A number one, which we strive to get. And I don't know if our size would give the limitations of having the type of uh, boat yard, <coughs> boat slip, and boat yard that he's referring to especially with the kind of costs that would be associated with that over the time frame of doing repairs, which we'll have to do anyway, uh, to fix it up. But uh, if the city takes over the boat yard, which we, I'm totally not for at all, uh, you're looking at a half million dollars to a million dollars strictly on a boat lift that you'd have to have. With was my uh, guess is as far as the, uh, for a brand new machine to pick it up. There's also Limit, again, the limitation of space for uh, the type of boat, size of boats you can be able to get down. He was referring to some rather large boats that uh, you're not going to be able to get. I mean, I've lived here all my life. If you didn't hang the left side or the uh, south side of the buoys going out, you got hung up. I don't care what you were in. And so it's, it's continuous that way, uh, you know, to leave the marina. So the, the inherent cost of keeping this up all the time. We're either going to have to generate a lot more money or figure out a, you know, a way to lease this to add, add these costs into this to help offset the cost for it. Um, but like I said, the main thing is, I hope everybody understands that these costs, are, uh, that the way they stand today, definitely have to be changed. That's pretty much it. Oh, there's one more thing. The one thing I, is... Again, I, this is a business I don't know much about, but I don't know what it takes to run a boat yard uh, or if you have to have boat slips in order to do that, if it's a combination of having both or, or you can't separate it out. I, and that we really need to study on as far as how to handle this lease, either separately or put them all together as a one-time, one, one item thing. I, I just don't, I don't think you can run a boat yard without having the, the boat slips attached to it. Personally. Again, I, I can't swear to that. I don't. I can't say that's an actual fact. I don't know. We certainly need to look into that fact. Because the last thing I want to do is make the wrong decision and nobody bid on this. And the last, the next thing I know, we're handling. It. We don't need to handle. <coughs> Councilman Brown, we don't need to handle what the boat yard. The boat yard. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. City doesn't need to be in the boat yard business. No. Uh, in my opinion, the lease needs to be restructured to what's fair to the city. Uh, you know, if the current leasee cannot come to agreement on that, then we put it out for bid. And if nobody bids on what we think is fair for the city, then at that point we'll refigure what the city wants that property to be. A few things I'd like to talk about. First of all is that for those people that might be interested in the the portion of the marina that the city does still manage uh, where the fishing vessels are and there are some pleasure vessels over there as well the roughly 25 slips on the extreme east side of the marina i want to say that this doesn't this is we're not talking about anything that's going on there i know that there's some anxiety among people that keep boats there the marina nor the boat yard encompasses those slips and i want to assure you that I don't know unless I'm wrong, unless I hear council people say it. We're not, we're not trying to do anything with that portion of the marina. Right now, we, 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 and our ordinance says that 60% of those slips at all times must be reserved for fishing vessels. That could be an oysterman or a crabber or uh, a shrimper or some other type of fisherman. So 60% of those slips must be um, all, always maintained for that. So. Um, the only thing that's going to happen there is that we're going to continue to improve the bulkheads there that we've uh, put in the budget and we're going to uh, dredge out some of those slips and we're going to rebuild the fuel dock. So I think that for those people to put your mind at ease that you're only going to see improvements and we're not trying to um, make that so nice that uh, we're trying to uh, run you off. Now will those prices stay the same forever? Maybe not. I mean, it's still a pretty good deal uh, over there, and and whomever has the marina actually has to contend with those prices, and it's, you know, they can't uh, attract any of those boats because the city is, is charging such a small amount. But for now, I don't think anybody at this table is wanting to change that. So I first wanted to reiterate that. 
The second thing is that I agree with just about everything that I'm hearing from the council members up here. I think that there's a lot more value to what I'm hearing uh, in the marina and the boatyard lease and what we're currently getting now. 15, 20 years ago, that might have been a pretty good deal. So we don't want to go back and judge those people for the leases that they have. I think that maybe everybody in the city at that time, obviously the city fathers thought that, you know, that was fair to everyone. And so that's the leases that were entered into. I think that going forward, we definitely have to see some improved revenue. Um, from the citizens that live in that area and along Seacliff Drive, there was talk last meeting, in the last work session about maybe enhancing that beachfront and what to do with that. And I, I, I'm adamantly opposed to doing anything with that. Um, I think that we have a bluff that people can get married on. I think that we have a beach that people can go to now and inviting people down to that 50 foot wide section of beach that we have there is probably not gonna be a good idea. And, and I don't want to uh, raise the ire of the people on Sea Cliff. And I, and I think that that would be unwelcome to those people if, if I had to guess. Um, so I, I don't think that, I think that whatever we do with that, it can be, can, even the city could carve that out of the boat yard lease and just leave it as it is, uh, or it could stay with the boat yard lease uh, as it is now. But I'm a little bit concerned with us trying to promote that as another destination in the city. And I, I'd like some feedback on that from council as well, yeah, I've given that any thought. But. I hadn't really thought about that particular part of it, but I, when I went down there to look, it did look for that part of the beach, or that, that part you're talking about of the boat yard was neglected, obviously. I mean, the, the, the beach was dirty. I mean, I don't know about promoting it for events, but I mean, I, I think it would keep it clean for the, so that the citizens of Fairhope could go down there and sit on the beach if they wanted. They should go down and watch the sunset. I'll, I'll add just a little that. bit of something there about the beach. If we do bring in sand like we've done in the past, and it doesn't have to be for anything, but uh, citizen use, but we would want to get with the people who live there so it's collaborative and that it would be more affordable for everybody to do something because I know that they have some restoration <coughs> that they need to do too. So that, that was what I would want to point out if we do something like that. And, and keep in mind too that we only have two proposals right now in the Restore Act funds and this is one of them. It's tying in, you know, things that are needed to, you know, make the assets that we have, restoring them and, and things like that. So we do have to think about that money if it is awarded. And we did put in dredging, of course, and, you know, doing the things we need to make it the best marina that it can be. And we also have the, if we got that money, we do have the marina at the Fairhope Pier. Absolutely. That could be dredged. Well, the, the pier is part of it. And the enhancements that could be no, used the pier there. Is, it's from the pier to the marina. Right. So, so the, I guess what I'm saying is I'd like to see us uh, see a little bit more potential out of that. The easiest thing would be for the leases to remain the same. The options are to break them up, the city to take over one. But as I looked into the numbers, and I've been given two or three different sets of numbers, and the truth is probably somewhere in between as to what the actual numbers are. Uh, and, and that by the time we hire uh, a harbor master and two or three dock hands to run that, uh, probably less in the winter, more in the summer. Um, you know, we might be better off just leasing that. So for simplicity's sake, it might be easier just to try to negotiate a deal. And if that doesn't work, then put it out for bid. I think that we're going to be having a meeting where we can talk about figures uh, okay. later when we can't talk about those figures. But I, I actually have some price points. Uh, I've met with some members of the Harbor Board. I think several of others, you, you may have met with them as well. We can come together and maybe come up with a figure that, that we think is fair and and float it out there and see what happens. What do you think about that? You got something else you mentioned, the, the uh, slips on the eastern side. You know, we bought the other day, there's quite a few boats in there that don't fit the criteria of what the slip rental is intended we, for. As we need as to look at that slip rental because that is for the Corps of Engineer. It's an old law, and since they don't dredge anymore, I don't think it applies anymore. Well, I think he may be talking about recreational versus fishing vessel. Right, and then well, some of the other businesses that are operating now there. We, we want to make sure that we take care of the fishermen and, and trimpers 
but that is that what you were saying was for I think the Corps of Engineer and they're not helping anymore. Well, it was it was always encouraged to keep the shrimp boats there Absolutely. so that they would dredge it, and we just said sixty percent was what the council voted on about three, two to three, three to four years ago. We changed it maybe two years ago, where we we changed. Uh, the rates a little bit and we actually defined what a fishing vessel was and we actually defined what a recreational boat is and uh, Robert I did follow up with a couple members of the Harbor Board and they are paying recreational boat rates there for the boats that are recreational at least the ones that I inquired about uh, the owner of one of them is in the audience and he or she knew that he's paying recreational five dollar a foot rate not the 680 a year or, or whatever so I did I did follow up but, but I <coughs> Well, it's cheap, but then if you look at the way those uh, slips are, I mean, there's not much to them. Right. Uh, so $5 a foot is, is, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, and back to what, what you'd said, though, Mayor, is I think that, and maybe even something that Mr. Hutchins alluded to, is that I've actually had a lot of people, a very lot of people, and, and, and uh, one of them, all of our friends, everybody knows Panini Pete that owns Sunset Point over there. One thing he said to me, was that you would be surprised at the number of his patrons that say don't ever get rid of those shrimp boats because they like that ambiance of being able to look at that way of life and that's a little bit of our heritage it doesn't mean we can't clean up the the piers and make it nicer for them but uh, there is something to having that in your marina i think that kind of is a is, it's hard to put a value on that well 60 percent of 25 is only 15 boats so it's not a ton that are required to be there, but another and thing. It can be great. You can have yeah. 100% of them, but at all times it's required to have at least 60%. Um, another thing I want to mention, um, this may be part of a negotiation, but would be part of a negotiation, but right now I saw a proposed idea of doing a 10-year lease with a 10-year renewal, and I would be in favor of doing something much shorter as long as it was long enough that somebody could justify the capital expenditure to come in and fix up whatever they needed to do. I just think 20 years is an awful long time to be committed to something not knowing what we have moving forward. I agree with you 100%. That's, that's kind of that goes to that cost thing for that term or that mm -hmm. lease. You probably need to discuss that in the executive session okay. so that we don't give anybody a competitive advantage. Fair enough. Yeah. Any other comments on that? I got a lot of what he said when I wait for the executive session. Okay, <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, um, anything else on that, Mayor? <coughs> okay. All right. Committee updates. Councilman Robinson. I haven't had any committee meetings since the last city council meeting. I've got none. Councilman Boone. I haven't either since the last meeting. I have not had any meetings. The uh, bike and pedestrian committee met last uh, Tuesday. Uh, we've got a new a new chairman was elected and uh, I think they've met with Wayne and Sherry Lee about bike rack locations and I think that's going to be pushing forward here in the near future uh, as well as the, the, the trying to create a little bit safer for bikers around the downtown area there's kind of some segments that are not connected you know like one little one block will have a bike lane, and for two blocks there won't be one, and then it'll, it'll pick back up. So we'll try to get a some kind of perimeter around downtown, uh, not not through downtown, but around downtown that is as a continuous uh, bike lane. So people coming into town feel safe biking around, and they put their bike in the bike rack and enjoy downtown. So they'll be bringing that forward shortly as well. Uh, the EAC met last week as well. Uh, the Baldwin County Board of Education is voting on May 18th on a curriculum based four part plan of uh, what they will fund the Board of Education. And it's, their, their plan is in alignment with the Acrobus study of what, where the county wants to head. So that was encouraging to hear uh, from Joyce Woodburn. And uh, when we met with them, they shared their enrollment projections for Fairhope and what their long-range plan is as far as funding and uh, continuing to build schools. But the relationship between the EAC and the county is, is good. 
the uh, meeting was real productive and everybody left feeling good about the direction of the current schools. Councilman Conner. Um, I think Mr. Stankowski covered the library board um, already today. Environmental Advisory Board has a meeting this Friday at 3 p.m. And right now, primary item on their agenda is, is making sure that the Clean Marina uh, campaign is built into whatever lease we, we negotiate. And then Historic Preservation Committee, I've unfortunately missed the last couple of those meetings, just unable to attend. So I'll have a follow-up on that Are next you meeting. I hope it's not <laughs> too steep. <laughs> so that's it. I have not had a uh, committee meeting since the last meeting as well. Department heads, Eric, I see you first. You know, every day is a dull day for you, isn't it? <laughs> you know, just uh, let me comment on Eric for a moment. I, uh, you know, he's one of those. He'll guys. appreciate this. <laughs> Well, Eric's one of those guys that, you know, he, he has to deal with a lot of citizens that, you know, uh, he gets a, you know, there's always a lot of complaints about this and that, I mean, he's just a utmost professional. I've had to call him a few times to convey some concerns just this week, and I appreciate when you, when you take it off, <laughs> you take the heat off the council, Eric, I know that you're doing your job, but thank you for that. Dan, Ames? Chief? Back. Robert? Uh, was I correct in stating that we'll include now the fuel dock as, as well? Dan McCrory? Anybody else sitting down? Tim? The combination of all the equipment. I looked at the day, we got together and we sold about 94,000. And roughly 20 vehicles. I'm talking about tag vehicles. 20 of those. The rest 
set as tractors and long board and this and that and such. We still have about six pieces that have not been prepared yet. Okay. Harper? Good. Yeah. I'd just like to say that we're very busy internally and externally, and I'd just like to ask you all the contractors and uh, citizens to bear with us and work on progress and make happy to land here and there and respond. But we're very, very busy. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> Wayne? No, nothing, sir. Okay. Here's left. Just uh, see Richard and Sherry Lee over here. Tom? Richard? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. I'm trying to get the tap grant uh, finished, which requires a decision on whether we want to have a clear span bridge over Fly Creek or whether we want to put the timber piling that were originally in the contract class to be installed. We think there may be some long-term maintenance consequences to a treated boardwalk pipe system across there. We think some debris could pile up against the timber piling if, if we did that. The, that's the bad news. The worst news to that is to go to a 100-foot aluminum clear span, 8-foot wide with aluminum boardwalks going out on the approaches to that. Uh, it would add about fifty-five to fifty-six thousand dollars to the contract, but we we think it's a worth the investment in long-term maintenance issues for that. I, I was trying to position the decision to where we could get the foundation of information together and the change order put together for the next council meeting. I see it's not on the agenda, but I don't know how it. And I apologize, I don't know enough about the municipal system to understand what information is required to be on the agenda versus just asking to have it on there with the information that I have available. That well, we're doing exactly what you should do and, and, and council look for that to be on the next agenda. If you could just supply clerk with that information so that she can disperse it to the council members for the next meeting. Thank you. We have uh, on the electric system, we have the oil tested the transformers for the substations that are at Volanta. That, it, it, and I forwarded, the guy who said you read the stuff so you understand what I'm saying about this. The, uh, the oil at Volanta has some pretty high concentrations of contaminants that can indicate, I'm not suggesting it's going to fall apart tomorrow, but it can indicate there's an opportunity for a shorter term failure to that substation, to those transform that transformer in there. And of course the, the, the nickels, what we'd like to do with the nickels and the Ferris Avenue uh, transformers is, is to go in and filter that oil. There, there's a little bit of issue with that that we want to correct before the summer season. But in the process of looking at the Volanta substation and that transformer, the recommendation from our consultant would be to try to replace that as soon as possible. The, the, the methodology by which we would go through the electric system and, and replace some of these substations would be that the Valanta substation happens to be the last one. It's the furthest one out from our delivery point and in order to shut it down. We have to have these other ones improved to, to take that load while it's down to be replaced. So what we'd like to do, Silicaga happens to have transformers available that are just a little bit bigger maybe than the ones that Melanta. This the, the Silicaga's got single phase transformers. What we're talking about at Melanta now is a three phase transformer. So we're looking at three single phase transformers that Silicaga has. We're looking at having one spare in, in their in their inventory. But what we'd like to do is do some confirmation of the quality of those transformers with some oil test on the site of Silicaga and then perhaps if everything looks good and the recommendation from the engineer is this is a good insurance policy to have and be ahead of this <coughs> two or three year curve we're looking at to, to get to the Valencia substation that uh, we, we, we think that's 
the, the, the best approach to take. And, and we say that not just because the engineers recommended it, but because we've also looked at some replacement units that would be rental type applications. And, and you're looking in, it, it gets to be quite expensive if you're looking to rent generation and or transformers on a two or three year term. It, 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 you, you, you'll spend the budget pretty quick uh, if, if we don't just do something. That, and plus, the, the transformers we we'll get from Silicon to salvage value would likely be the, the cost that they're asking us to pay for them. The, the added cost, though, is the, the, the oil test that we want to do before they, they were shipped and then after they got here, just because transportation could be a little bit touchy to it. You know, if you get a lot of jostling on the road, if it runs off the road or shakes things up, we want to confirm that we're in good shape when we get there. And then the plant takes the load and unload it. So there are some added costs to, to just getting those things here and then setting them up. But we think it's a good insurance policy to, to, to cover the next couple of years of life. So what I'm hearing, uh, Mr. Peterson, is that if we were to purchase a surplus transformer from Silicon, we need to do a survey of that transformer. Yes. And it's probably not going to be what we need when we upgrade the Volantis substation. No. But it would probably have fairly near the value that we pay for it at, at such time that we would not need it after the upgrade. Uh, or we could keep it as a spare maybe as well if you, if you thought that it was necessary. You may have others in the system that you would use as spare. Uh, we do have one spare that we want to reserve because we, we're still looking at the, the Nichols and the Fairf Avenue substation that have issues with their oil that indicate wear and tear. And, I mean, we, we don't want to use our, our spare before we get started with the entire project. About how much is that transformer from you purchased it from the cell cargo, there's, there's four of them, and we're getting four, so we'll have one spare of a single phase transformer. That they're looking at a dollar KVA, which is about thirteen thousand dollars for the cost of the four transformers. It's gonna cost about fifty one hundred dollars to load them and bring them here. It's gonna cost another fifteen hundred two thousand dollars to unload them here. And then it's going to cost about forty-five hundred dollars to test the oil there before we decide to get them, and then when they get here, confirm that condition. So that's about yeah, maybe upper twenties. Yeah, that's still just still thousand. roughly the it, cost of less, renting one for one, one month, month isn't it? Over, over replacement generator for that side. Yeah, one month. Less than one. Less than one. Month. Yeah. I don't think there's a uh, much debate there. Thank you. And now, this goes back to budgeted item versus maintenance item. And yeah, I think due to the cost of that, it still has to be approved, uh, even if it's a maintenance item. Am I correct on that? Uh, oh, Mr. Peterson, thank you. That's an excellent, excellent report. And I, I want to say one more thing about Mr. Peterson. is that If you look at the item on the agenda tonight, um, and that is item 18, but also I wanted to go back to item 13. Uh, we've had a consultant, uh, sets our utility rates for many years uh, for City of Fairhope. We spent approximately 40, roughly $45,000 on that consultant last year. And I feel like they were capable, um, but I've had the, the pleasure of working with Mr. Peterson on some very, very detailed number crunching that he, that he did uh, over the last couple of weeks regarding utility rates. And I, I was just, I was very impressed, Mr. Peterson, <coughs> very thorough. Well, I'm trying to stay formal in here. But, uh, Richard, I, it was very uh, precise and it was good work. And I, I want to say that because of that agenda item, if you have any reservations about whether or not Richard can handle it. Uh, is he a world-renowned expert in that right now? Probably not, but can he learn it pretty quickly? I, I think that he can. Well, I will say in my past career, I wanted to design rates for water, sewer, and wastewater. I have not done water, sewer, and gas. So I've not done electric yet, so I'm excited about that opportunity. <laughs> that, there's two more things I want to break and just see if we have time. I'm yes. Right. Can I ask a question before we get off of yeah. that? Uh, I want to make sure that where we're going to put the three single-phase transformers is eventually going to have to take a three, I mean, a 
a three-phase transformer. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do the do the three single-phase transformers equate to the same power or whatever the lack? I, I don't know actually, the term. As actually, a as a three as a because you know in, in the world of drainage, three twelve-inch pipe does not do does not equate to a thirty-six-inch drainage pipe. So I was wondering you're, if you're it's the same actually, thing. The, each single-phase transformer is thirty-three hundred kVA, which relates to ten thousand kVA total. You know, each phase is one third of the load. Right. The ones that are out there now are seventy-five hundred. So actually, we're going to gain just a little bit with, without having to rely on the cooling, extra cooling capacity upgrade to the seventy-five hundred kVA. Okay. This day. So I, yeah, we, we think it's a good. Trade and I don't think they'll be loaded as much as the one is now in terms of percentage capacity. Okay. Baldwin County, I talked to David Connor Friday afternoon. He made the comment that we're probably the only two people working after five o'clock on Friday, although they weren't really working. We were talking about the, 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 the relocation issues we're having where the county's upgrading the culvert capacity at some of these county roads from the April 14th event. And Jay Whitman's has submitted a breakdown of, of prices to, to perform that work in house. Where David Connor was asked by the commission to try to find out how he could help move the thing along a little bit to try to get some of this work finished. One, one issue they're having is their final resurfacing of, of those cuts and those roads has to do with having riprap laid on both sides and the equipment they need to use to put that down so they don't want to put the final layer of asphalt on the wearing surface until they finish that and they can't do that until some of the stuff's relocated. So bottom line is the county commission will probably meet on the 16th, I think, of May to, to create the reimbursable agreement that comes with this cost estimate and then they would like to to be turned around fairly quickly. I, I don't think it's a net zero cost to us. We'll, we'll get the materials and then be reimbursed for that. We'll be reimbursed for our labor and equipment as well. I, I'm just letting you know that's going to be something that comes up, you know, within the next couple of weeks. If, if we can proceed with the reimbursable agreement, then we'll pursue that. And if you need to see that, at the next council meeting, I don't know that anything will be available to see until two days before the meeting. But they're in a hurry to get it done, and I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to accommodate working with the county to get it done as quick as we can. Richard, uh, if you anticipate it, ask the clerk to put it on the agenda, and then, and, and we'll have a line item on there anyway. Okay. And if something was to come up and it wasn't right. done, it's easy to pull it as opposed to. I already have the agreement, and I've got the resolution ready for the next meeting. I had the resolution already prepared and the reimbursable agreement from Thank Mary you. Booth. I'm that, that they're preparing that before no, I've, I've got it. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And then the last thing is the south section lift station, because of the way the generator fit on the site and because of the way we increased it, and we're, we're trying to accommodate the property owner. There's a fence that uh, we're trying to get put around the, the, the lift station site itself. But when we added the, the, the site, we added the size to that site. We took the, the drive that's there that served that part of the property. And I was thinking we might be able to, you know, provide a drive for the owner on the north side of the substation. Uh, we're looking at different options on pipe. It's a, I don't know how much it'll all come out to be, but I think it's the right thing to do. I think that these people from just odor itself that we're trying to work on the odor issue but that's a challenge in its own right but I, I think it's the right thing to do if we if we get to the point where we find that and i'm looking at the cost if it's an unbudgeted item ten thousand dollars or less we can admit we can move administratively on that if it's ten thousand or less on a budgeted item we can move administratively no, that it's slightly a different item. number but you know bring that just bring that to the council i mean we we, we consider okay. unbudgeted items. item well we're right. still looking at two options on the different colors and the price we haven't got the prices back yet but that's what we're doing have you have you determined anything uh having to do with the odor you know you were going to do some well we're looking at some, some gas some, tests some larger canister type uh units that have uh, some media in there that will help absorb the odor we're, we're, the, the odor control 
the magic, uh, biomagic, whatever they call it. The, the guy we talked to them was talking about it maybe as much as $100 a day to treat odor at that lift station. I thought, why do we just, we're, we're paying you enough now to do it. We, so then I got onto the thing about, well, maybe we can use some detectors and, and look at concentration levels of these sulfates in all the wet wells and maybe come up with a way to, to use that concentration of the sulfates as a way to add more or less chemical and maybe save because they're not every day you need it anyway. And so maybe save off the 250 enough to put the sensor in and correct the, the, the proportional rate feed system that we would need to just match with the concentration of the soil well, That's kind of where I'd like to try to head with it. It's not to the point where we've got it defined at this point, but a canister is an option and then some type of variable feed on the chemical itself is an option. Anyway, we're, we're working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Richard. Sure. Did y'all miss me last meeting? <laughs> so I was, um, I handed this out to everybody beforehand because it has a lot of the reports from all the different areas in the department. But I'll just give you um, the top line. You know, I was in D.C. with CAPS, which is the uh, Coastal Alabama Partnership. It was a, le a legislative trip um, representing the city. And it was focused on um, agriculture, tourism, and transportation, all things that um, we're a part of as part of this regional consortium. Um, and I, Jack, you were at the MPO meeting, ESMPO. So we did get a $30,000 grant from MPO. and. Um, uh, t touch on this with Robert briefly too because it will affect the pedestrian bike committee because it is to do a study for that downtown partially to relieve uh, congestion look at other um, pedestrian and parking options for downtown so the study will follow up on the Neil Schaefer traffic study and the Dan Burden parking study and actually give us some implementable solutions to those studies to move that forward so we can finally come up with some you know some real resolutions I have no idea what that entails at this point until they do the study but we have the money to pay for it so that's that's great news um, and I will we'll stay in touch with the um, with Robert and with the uh, committee on that um, we also were notified Friday that we received a $20,000 grant for this program we applied for about just uh, about two or three months ago um, for a storm, a storm drain medallion program, and it's to put those medallions that you see in some cities about to educate people in the community about polluting the bay and what should and shouldn't go into the drains. Um, and so, there uh, in the grant we applied for, and we came before council for this. So you may recall, it's a twenty thousand dollar grant with an in kind match. Um, we'll work with the schools to do an educational component. We'll do some sort of community event where people will go out and put the storm drain medallions out. I anticipate doing some sort of um, community engagement with uh, actually designing the medallions. So they're specific for Fairhope. Um, and again, all, it's all new. They won't even let me talk about um, who is giving us that grant at this point, but you can go back in the minutes, I'm sure, and find that. Um, so. Those are, the, those are the big things. Um, I did want to just say briefly, just because we've done so much research on the Marina project, that um, Councilman Boone, we're happy to look into that, um, the numbers of the boat yards without slips and with slips and give some figures there on like marinas just to see what the comparison look like, looks like. I don't think, I'm not sure we have that yet. We have numbers from other marinas, but we have compiled. Okay, so we can compile that and give it to the council. And then also, um, yeah, the only other thing I was going to say is we had been looking into the lease, too, and the first right of refusal issue, um, which didn't appear to be in the lease. But I know it's pretty much the council's discretion as to what you want to do with that. But I know um, when we were looking at it, we were looking at an open bid situation um, was the recommendation from staff on that. And I think that's it. Everything else is in that report, unless you have questions. Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Tom? I don't have anything. Come on, man. I've got something. Roll Thompson. 
Okay. Since Jack's talking about all these other heads, uh, I got a great report on you, Tom, and how much how diligent you worked through these soccer tournaments and uh, just trying to make sure everything was taken care of, everything was done. As behalf of the city of Fairfield, we really appreciate that. Well, thank you. It was the first big tournament at that park, and I wanted to make sure everything went well. So. It's always nice to get a kudos for uh, our city employees that do an outstanding job, especially from the citizens. How long did it take the players to get used to uh, the, the flinching from the shooting range across the street? <laughs> it was, it was kind of Anybody down miss any shots? <laughs> uh, Tom, Tom and I also met and Shirley with uh, Phil Savage to start planning for um, if we're going to do this, we want to make sure it's a big deal, senior ball and make it the best it can be for the city. And if we start now, I do think it could have a good economic impact for the whole city. So Where are we that one, one, one meeting out of many that we'll have. <laughs> and I'll keep you all posted when we meet again about some of the ideas. Okay. All right, we will move into the agenda meeting for just a few minutes. Uh, the first item will be a public hearing. Uh, request to rezone the property of Ecumenical Ministries. Wayne, will you speak to that? Yes, sir. Okay. Second item is an ordinance establishing the placement negotiations of city insurance. I can discuss that. Third item is an ordinance to repeal and replace to exempt certain covered items. Uh, who would that be if we need to call them? Deborah, would that be you? I know that we talked about this at the, we talked about item seven at the last uh, work session meeting. Uh, number eight, uh, amending the rules and procedures and all this is for meetings of this council. I can discuss that. Uh, item nine, a selection of alley house design for professional. Who would speak to that? Can you speak to that, Shirley? Uh, item 10. Uh, the professional consulting services for public relations, communication, and social media. Would that be you, Shirley? Who would that be? Um, it would, except the contractor is no longer available. So she's actually pulled today. Do we need to strike that from the agenda? Yeah, I literally just had a message from Do you have anybody else in mind as of this time? Okay, um, item 11, the actuarial valuation. Who would speak to that? Would that be uh, Deborah? Twelve, who's going to speak to the uh, consulting services for technical writing? Wayne, you going to speak to that? Okay, I think we've already kind of discussed on 13. Who would speak to item 13 on the contract with the uh, consultant, Ari Pender? I think that I, I mentioned it. Wait, uh, is I that the one that you're mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's I'll give that a shot. We might need some backup on that. But uh, item 14, uh, rejecting the bids. Dan, can you speak to that? Dan uh, McCrory? Yes. Okay, and also 15 looks like. Okay, 16 I think is just fulfilling uh, budgeted items. Uh, 17, same thing. 18 were the transformers that was mentioned. You can ask uh, uh, Dan Ames or uh, Richard. Pest control would be a Dan Ames question if anybody had one on that. Um, item 20 is the uh, asking the mayor to submit the municipal water pollution prevention program report. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 21, I'm going to assume that's Wayne. 
Mr. Chief. Mr. Chief Wayne on item 21. Yes, sir. Uh, is that going to be uh, tut or 23 is self explanatory uh, 24 the charge off will that be double okay Okay, that's it. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, 20 uh, public participation will be before executive session. That was not supposed to be in that order. Yeah, you have to really want to say something. Yeah, you have to really want to say something. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, Council, I do have one more item. Um, this is a, an add on resolution to pay for uh, walk on Adams and Renewable Architects for Professional Services, $32,510.97. We want to pay them, we need to amend the agenda to put this on. I think that um, the issue was there was not a contract with them. Uh, there was a apparently a handshake deal done with Mayor Camp. Uh, they did provide the work, they did provide drawings, uh, they did provide professional services. So it's up to you, Council, to decide whether or not uh, you want to pay them for this. We hand this out to everyone, so I will entertain a motion um, prior to the meeting if you want to add that to the agenda. Okay. With that, uh, anybody have anything else before we adjourn for about seven or eight minutes? Any time to freshen up the coffee or something? I want to make sure it doesn't go and notice what uh, Dan McCord mentioned about lining those pipes and what it did for the overflow during the heavy storm war. You know, wet well not having to keep up. What was that capacity of that wet well? You say it had two feet. Is that? 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent of that capacity. The railroad reached six and a half, and instead it was causing the manhole to back up around the corner. So it reduced it from overflowing to maximum of two feet. Right, the maximum was on the maximum of four feet. The maximum was just a tremendous, you know, Yeah. 30 percent capacity. Anything else, Council? Okay, we're adjourned for about six minutes.